what are we really selling here? Cause it ain't houses, no properties, no condos. I saw barely any houses this season. And to me, this was really the worst season of selling sunset. And we're gonna get into all of it from a therapist perspective right about now. If you are new here, I am Denise Brady. I'm a licensed manager family therapist and I love all things reality TV. So make sure you hit that like, that notification bell, bloop, so you never miss a thing. Now, is it just, is it me or are these seasons coming too quickly? Back to back to back. Now I get this is a cash cow for Netflix. A lot of people love watching this show, but at the same time, what are we selling? We're not selling houses. Okay, some of them we get a peek of their lives, but we have a lot of stand-ins, okay? And this season, to me, was a waste. I saw so many layers of microaggressions, okay? Now, it became, for me, all about Brie versus Chelsea, okay? That's what this whole thing was about. You got a man's letter. For the longest time, I'm like, why is she still here? Okay, she's not selling houses. I guess she's a friend of the show. Okay, we really don't see a lot of her personal life. This season we saw a little bit more. If anybody was really working on houses, I guess it was her. But there are just so many layers of season, so we're gonna start at the top. Okay, now we come in and we're coming off the cusp of everything had to happen last season. Now we see Mary and we see Jason and we see this, the new office. And I really didn't need to see all that. Okay, we're gonna just get to the juicy stuff. Now, the whole season was about Brie and Chelsea, and Brie coming to Chelsea about this uh, secret, okay? You got that, and you got Mary versus Chelsea. If you really ask me, it was everybody versus Chelsea, okay? And I think we got to the point where people are so blatantly open about the things they don't like about her, other cast members, and it reminded me a lot of tokenism, okay? being the only black person in a circle of white people. Now, y'all know I'm not the most PC channel, so sorry if I offend you with that. But being a person of color in a sea of white people, at some point, I feel like the tide is gonna turn and as much as you think you are accepted and welcome in that environment, eventually true colors will show. And we saw that, okay? We saw how Mary went against Chelsea, okay? And, you know, when it comes to marrying her husband, he irks me because he has so much energy at the beginning, being in Chelsea's face, touching her. But to me, where's that energy with Mary and Jason? Now, I'm a secure woman, but their relationship is a little bit weird. I get that they're best friends, but at the same time, I feel like we saw more of her with Jason than her own husband. Okay? It's given weird. Okay, it's almost like they're together, but not. I don't like that. Okay, and I want to know from you guys if your partner has a best friend who is the opposite sex and they're like this, does it ever get too close for your comfort? Could you be in a relationship with someone where their best friend was the opposite sex and they were like Jason and Mary? Now they make a cool little coin together, but at times I'm like, this is just giving too much. Okay, so we see how. Mary is very passive aggressive. I think she has an anxious attachment style. I think a lot of these women do. Chriselle too has an anxious attachment style. Chriselle is somebody who wants everyone to like her. And I think because of how she was raised, feeling different, coming to LA, I've seen her many seasons try and just get everyone to like each other. And girl, that's unrealistic. She wants to be so liked so much that I see her at times her attachment style coming out of how she shows up in the relationships and how she tries to put everyone else together. And I wonder growing up, did she grow up in a chaotic environment where there was so many different things happening with her parents, relationships that she can't sit with the chaos. It's uncomfortable, it's uneasy. So she tries so hard to put things, everyone, please make nice. I think she has a, probably a high level also of anxiety. And so all that, angst and things with the show, it really triggers her anxiety. And this season she says she probably won't come back. <laughs> she said that before. Them checks that Netflix is cutting must be good. And she's trying to have a baby, IVF, surrogacy, and the checks are checking, okay? But I think I see, this season I saw a lot of her anxiety. 
um, her uncomfortableness with the way the dynamics with the women are. Why can't you guys just get together? Why can't we just all be friends? And a group of women, that's not reality, okay? And so getting back to Mary's anxious attachment style and passive aggressiveness, I feel like she is also uncomfortable with people not liking her. She wants and needs to be liked. And so at times she throws a rock behind her hand. And this time she threw a lot of rocks. And we saw her at this opening with Chelsea saying, your skirt is too short, people are complaining. Aren't you on a crop top? Now I know this is an LA thing with the wardrobe. And one thing we must recognize, this is a set. Around the corner is a wardrobe closet trailer that they all dress up in. And when they say scene, they walk through. So I don't understand why she had to make this a big deal. Oh wait, we're on TV. Okay. So people are complaining about her skirt being too short. And I, I'm like, we're, we're eight seasons in girlfriend. I don't know how many titties, ass, cleavage I have seen over eight seasons of this show has been on what, five, six years at this point. All of a sudden, Chelsea is the problem. See, when you don't have nothing going on with yourself, you don't have no storyline, you got to pick on that girl, the it girl. And I think Chelsea has been the it girl and that makes him uncomfortable. When Christine left, Chelsea took Christine's place. And I don't think they really like that. I don't think they like the attention. So we see how throughout the season, Mary is with these microaggressions, saying little comments. Even, you know, one thing that kind of irked me, and I don't know if it was just me, when she was having lunch with Amanza and she told the waitress, I really love your accent. I don't know that that to me also came out like, eh. now I don't want to call Mary a racist because I think that's a strong word. And I don't think that she's a racist. I don't think she's a racist, but at the same time, we all have to get in tune with our subconscious biases, how sometimes that stuff comes up. You might be thinking it, it might have been conditioned and ingrained inside you through childhood, things you have seen, but that stuff is problematic. And I know if no one has called her out on it, at least on the show, maybe on Twitter and all that, yes, we have, but where's the accountability? But instead we're focused so much on Chelsea. What is Chelsea doing? Okay, so over and over again, we see how the girls are not over here. And then we got that other messy girl. Is her name Lisa? Y'all know I'm not good with names. Um, the one who just seems bitter and old and always got something to say. Okay. And got, ain't got nothing. We don't see her showing no houses. What is her purpose? See, we got a lot of people on here. What is their purpose? They need to let be let go. Okay. And her jealousy and her miserableness and her bitterness. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. Okay. So we get to Brie. And we get to um, Chelsea. Now, the thing about this whole situation is we have to remember the foundation. You're on a TV show. Do I really think that one of my friends will call me and say, hey, girl, I got the T on your friend of me. And do I really think Brie was like, OK, girl, hold it, hold it, hold it. In a few days, we're going to film and then you could tell me on TV. No. As soon as you get that text, oh, girl, what's T? Tell me. Let me know right then and there, okay? And there have been mixed things saying that Brie told her off camera and then production wanted them to refilm. But the thing is you look linked up with the ops and I get that her and Chelsea are not in the best place. They're not friends, but woman to woman, especially when you've been through the same thing with cheating, okay? I would think that there would be some kind of, I don't wanna say girl code because they're not even on that level, but some kind of like, I will tell you privately, but your ops want to be on the show so bad. What's her name? Amanda. She want to be on the show so bad. Pinky in the brain. Yes. Cause Brie and that girl is pinky in the brain linked up and do a takedown. Now it might not been, have been pushed by Brie, the takedown, but her friend was like, I want a spot. And we saw it at the end of the season. I want that girl's spot. I'm sitting on her desk with, her, with my 360 lipo and BBL and my plump lips. I'm going to put all this fake ass on this desk. Okay. And th those two, you know, we're going to see them next season because these shows love drama. And at the cost of what? Chelsea. Okay. And I just think throughout this season, it was all about Chelsea. When we wasn't seeing Chelsea, they were talking about her. We barely saw houses. 
This show ain't even about houses no more. It's about drama. Okay. Everything is a scene. And I just don't understand how it had to get to this place where we don't have anything going on. So we're going to pick on Chelsea. And I think all these shows at some point where you have a um, ensemble cast, they get together and decide what's going to be the storyline this season. Where are we going to go? Let's pick on Chelsea. Because what does Mary have going on outside of selling houses? Do we really see her personal life? Emma, when last time you saw her sell a house, she show up in a short dress and look cute. And do I think she's sleeping with a married man? It would not shock me. Because she's young. She's just having a good time. She's bubbly. You see how whenever she shows up to a house, the man is like, oh, you sell houses? Okay, Chelsea. I want this one. Oh, you look good every time. So I would not be surprised. Now, if you're going to bring it up on camera, just say the name who she's sleeping with. Don't tiptoe around it. You had the, the cojones to come on TV and say it and allegedly that she's sleeping with somebody. Bring it all to the surface, girl. Don't be scared. But I feel like we've seen a lot of everyone wanting camera time, that anxious attachment style. And when it comes to people who are secure on the show, I feel like Chelsea has a secure attachment style. Um, but what I even say, Jason, I don't even think Jason really does because he seems bored. He this season he didn't have a, a new girl. Um, but if you notice at the end of every season, we see him spend a whole bunch of money on something. Last time it was the office. This time it was that little car. Okay. What are you trying to fill up inside of you <clears throat> that the money is not making you happy about is a real question. But I feel like this season was just, it was, it was garbage. Nothing was going on. And they had what, 10, 11 episodes and we're still going to get a reunion, which I'm looking forward to. But it just seems like people want fame at the expense of somebody else's life, tearing someone else apart. And I don't care. I just want to be on TV. I want a scene. I want to be part of the crew. Okay. And the girl that they brought in who owns Pioneer Town, I don't get that. She doesn't, I don't understand what got her on this show because she's not like the other women. She, you didn't really see her with them. They, she went to Pioneer Town with them and then what else? Not a lot. She seems like she really wants to sell houses and she's really about her business, which these other women, they're like, okay, I, I can sell a house, but let's do these scenes. Okay. Let me get some of my friends to show up and we can do some scenes because I'm not really here to sell houses. And houses are, in California, I think, are not selling as fast as much as they used to, you know. And when Brie brought on Johnny Manziel, I had to look, I had to do my Googles. Come like, Johnny Manziel, what is he doing? He not playing football, so how is he able to afford this house? So I did my Googles, and I'm like, he doesn't have a podcast. He's not a commentator. He doesn't do a lot of social media stuff. And so he he's playing golf, y'all. He said he loves living in Arizona, and he's playing golf. So once again, Brie brought on one of her friends to do a scene. Because do we ever see her clothes? No. And it's something about her spirit that's just evil. I feel like she has a disorganized attachment style. Just critical. Sometimes you just don't know what you're getting. It's not to me fearful avoiding. It's more disorganized. And I'm like, Nick Cannon must like that kind of, in his eyes, spice. Cause she doesn't appear, she does not appear submissive like some of the other women. She's not quiet. So it must be that bad girl energy that he liked about her. I'm not sure, but these are just my thoughts. A lot of anxious attachment style, a lot of I'm willing to hurt other people to make my own check in order to gain things that I want. But this was, this was the worst season. We need to, can y'all take a, a year off? to get it together, but they won't because it's a cash cow. They'll be back probably in the spring with season nine, early summer. But let me know, what do you think? Can you have a relationship with someone who has a best friend who's the opposite sex and they like this? Okay. What do you think of Romaine? Does he irk you? And Chelsea, do you think she'll start a new life outside of Manhattan Beach? What is next for her? And the hurt that she is going through, do you think that she'll be able to heal from this situation? And let me know your thoughts about the whole Brie versus Chelsea because we can't get into it. And I will see you guys in the next video.